It's election day, of course, tomorrow, and low voter turnout is expected. Political analyst Melissa Griffin Kane joins us now with more on what to look for when voters head out to the polls. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Well, you know, if polls are to be believed, then tomorrow's election is going to be decided by a pretty small group of people. Now, I have to confess, I personally hope millions of voters come out and prove all the pollsters wrong, but if it is a low turnout, entire races can be won or lost on just a few votes. And one thing that can reduce votes is the dilemma of orphan voters. Now, the term orphan voter is one I first learned from San Francisco State University professor Corey Cook. Now, here's what it is. Thanks to our state's top two primary system, we now have 26 races that are Democrat versus Democrat or Republican versus Republican. That means that thousands of voters will look down at that ballot and not see any candidate who's a member of that voters party. That's what we mean when we say orphan voters. So let's say you're an orphan voter you're Republican in Silicon Valley, where there are only two Democrats to choose from in the congressional race, that Ro Khanna and Mike Honda, who we've been talking about this morning. Do you hold your nose and vote for one of those Democrats, or do you fill out everything else on your ballot and just skip that one because you just can't stomach it? Whether orphan voters vote or skip can dramatically impact a low turnout election. That's got to be tough. You go in, you're a Democrat, you got two Republicans. What do you, you leave it blank? Do you vote for the one that leans far to the left? And uh, is there any trend of, has anything happened in the past, what these people do? Well, so we, this is not our first top two primary election. And according to Professor Cook, in the past, about 50% of orphan voters skip those questions. But we've only had a top two primary since 2012, so we don't exactly know what those voters are going to do this time around. Boy, we keep hearing about low voter turnout, but there are actually some close races. What are some of those hotly contested races? Well, you know, I know no one else is paying attention, but they really should because there are some very cool races going on. I'll give you my top three coolest races. First is the Oakland mayor's race. This is a ranked choice voting race. We've got an incumbent mayor, Jean Kwan, who is dramatically uh, opposed by a number of her constituents, but he, she does have good name recognition. So the question is, even if you're very unpopular, if you have name recognition, can you win a ranked choice ballot election over there in Oakland. We'll all be keeping our eyes on that. The second one, of course, is that I know you're probably sick of hearing about it, but the Rokana Mike Honda race down in Silicon Valley has everything you need for drama. It's Democrat versus Democrat, sort of incumbent versus new guy on the block, tech versus labor. It has all the makings of a very, very interesting race, and it's neck and neck, as our polls have shown. So that's one we'll all be watching. And finally, and on the statewide level, the state superintendent race. I may be the first person in history to make that statement, but the state superintendent race is actually shaping up to be the meatiest race because Tom Torlakson and Marshall Tuck, the two candidates, are neck and neck with 40% of the electorate undecided at this point. Both men are Democrats. Tom Torlakson, the incumbent, backed by the California Teachers Association and sort of the Democratic establishment. Marshall Tuck, backed by reformers who say, you know what, protections for teachers are now coming at the expense of students. This is, to some degree, a referendum on the California Teachers Association and its strength in the state. Also, very fascinating, very expensive race. We should all be watching that one as well. Go vote. Absolutely. Please yes. do. All right, Melissa, thank you. And one more thing with the yeah. absentee ballots. If you haven't mailed it yet, don't, right? You should drop it off at a poll site or elections office tomorrow. Otherwise, it might not get counted. Exactly. It has to be received by Election Day, not postmarked. That's right. There we go. All right, Melissa, thank you.